24 players, six lacrosse clubs, four rounds. I'm Paul Rabel, co-founder of the Premier Lacrosse League and midfielder for Atlas Lacrosse Club. And today is the first ever Premier Lacrosse League college draft. 24 of the nation's best college lacrosse players will be selected by our six head coaches. These are players who have proven throughout their four-year career that they are the best and have what it takes to play at the next level. This is a one-of-a-kind draft. Our coaches will be selecting the players and providing rationale here at NBC Studios in Stanford, Connecticut. Our season begins on June 1st at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, and finishes on September 22nd for the PLL Championship. All games are gonna be broadcasted live on the NBC Sports Group family of networks. Let's go check out the draft. From outside to inside Studio One here at NBC Sports. As Paul just mentioned, this is where 24 of the nation's best college lacrosse players will hear their names called by the head coaches you see as an invitation to begin their professional careers in the Premier Lacrosse League. I'm Paul Burmeister, and this is the inaugural PLL Draft. This June, the Premier Lacrosse League's maiden season will begin. Each of the six teams already has a stacked roster with 28 outstanding professionals. Today, each one of these coaches can enhance that roster with four college stars. Here's how it's going to work. The draft will consist of four rounds. The order was decided by a random draw. After each round, that order will be reversed. So the team with the first pick in the first round will go last in round two, giving the team who went last in round one the chance to pick first in round two. Once a pick is made, a one-minute countdown clock will be started to put the next team on the clock. So here's the draft order of the first round. The Archers won that random draw. They'll go first, and they'll be followed by the Atlas, the Chrome, Whip Snakes, Redwoods, and Chaos. Remember, each round thereafter will go in reverse order of the one before it. The head coaches were assigned their rosters, so today is the first chance to choose players that fit their roster and fit their system. We're going to meet each one of these coaches in just a few moments, but first, let's meet our draft analyst, four-time All-American and national champion at Princeton, Ryan Boyle. Ryan, first, before we talk about the draft and the prospects and the coaches, your impression of the overall talent of the PLL? These rosters are absolutely loaded, specifically on offense and at the attack position. So I see a premium with two-way midfielders and long-stick midfielders that could get up up and down the field, especially with the 45-second shot clock. Every draft has a player where it all begins. In the NFL draft this year, it was Kyler Murray. NBA draft is going to be Zion Williamson. Who is that player in the PLL? Yeah, unequivocally, that's Pat Spencer out of Loyola. Really a generational talent. He can do it all. He can create his own shot. He can distribute. He can shoot from the outside. He makes everyone around him better. However, in addition to the talent, there's something you have to understand about Pat Spencer right now. Yeah, unique position where he has a fifth year eligibility to play college basketball. May he explore that, may he not. That's certainly going to be a factor with this first pick overall. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of selection. All right, Ryan, talk to you in just a little bit. First pick belongs to the Archers. Head coach right here is Chris Bates, the former head coach at Ryan's alma mater at Princeton. You're the only player here who knows he can have any player in the draft he wants. How long have you known what player it's going to be? I think it's been about three weeks or a month that we've been on the clock, so we're excited to, to kick the thing off. It sounds like you're ready to make the pick, so go right sure. ahead. All right, with the, uh, with the first pick, the Archers Lacrosse Club take Pat Spencer from Loyola. How much of a consideration was the situation that Ryan just laid out in terms of the unknown of this first season? Well, he, you know, he's a young man that, that's got some options, and, and we respect that, um, but he is uh, as advertised. He makes everybody else around him better. Um, you know, he sees the field, he finishes the ball. Uh, in 1978, the Celtics took uh, Larry Bird with a pick and waited a year. And if that's, <laughs> if that's what we have to do, then that's what we have to do. Generational talent is what I hear. Is that what you saw on tape as well? Just size, uh, toughness. You know, he's a high character young man from everything we un understand. And uh, just, you can fit him in. And I think, I think our guys will like to play with him. Have you had a chance to see him in person? Sure. Yeah. Throughout the year, he, he's impressive. He's he's a he's a big physical kid, uh, but moves well and sees the field well. And, and there's there's not a lot of weaknesses in his game. All right, not a, not a big surprise. Maybe the surprises will come later. Yeah. Pat Spencer goes to the Archers. Atlas are up next. Head coach John Paul sitting right next to Chris held the same position as head coach at Michigan for 20 years. Uh, any surprise there? Is that what you expected to happen? Pretty much expected that. We were treating this as if we had the first pick, knowing that he was just off the board. Yeah. So, so how much fun is it to have the, the second overall pick? I'm thinking these GMs and head coaches and drafts. There's usually a lot of unknown with that first pick. So what's it like to know 
who it's going to be at number two. Yeah, I mean, as I said, we, we just we, we assumed that one guy was off the board and, and we were just coming into this feeling like with him out, we had the first pick and everybody else is available. All right. The floor is yours. Who's it going to be? Uh, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Ryan Conrad from Virginia. Wow. Ryan Conrad of Virginia has played some MIDI, has played some attack. How do you view him playing for your team? Well, uh, Ryan said it, that, that you know, two-way midfielders are going to be at a premium in this league, guys who can get up and down the field. Uh, that's certainly his game. Um, he's a great ground ball guy. He's, he's tough. Uh, he can score, um, but he can also play on the defensive end. And, so, and I think you know, we're going to be looking for a lot of guys like that. Was there a point in your evaluation in the last month or maybe even the last week where you said, you know what, this is our guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we always kind of had that feeling, and there were some other guys that we considered for this pick, uh, but we kept coming back to first impressions are often correct, and, uh, and, and we felt pretty strongly about him for a while. You got a couple guys in your team, some veterans you think he can learn from? 100%. Yeah, we have some great midfielders on our team, and, and really looking forward to seeing how some of those guys, Connor Busek, Paul Rabel, some of those guys really helped mold him as a professional. All right, moving on to the third pick. Rome head coach Dom Starja coached 24 years at Virginia, won four national titles there, and he has 14 players from Duke and Syracuse on his roster. How, how has the ACC flavor of your background and also your roster influenced your mindset here today? Um, well, I think you're looking for a particular kind of player, a player that could, that could stay out on the field and make plays, uh, play at both ends. Uh, you know, I, w I would suggest that uh, if you think of Carl's across, you know, in the last 15 years, uh, three of the programs that sort of play in a similar style are Syracuse, Duke, and Virginia, you know. And so uh, I don't think there'll be a lot of changes for the players. Uh, and uh, it's fun for me to finally be able to work closely with these guys that I've seen on the opposing sideline for so long. Well, Ryan Conrad of your old school of Virginia off yeah, the board. Yeah, Spencer Ryan. off the board. <laughs> Who's it going to be at three? Uh, the Chrome Lacrosse Club at number three uh, selects uh, Zach Goodrich from Towson University. What did you see from Zach to, to let you know he was your guy? I think you're seeing a, a defensive midfielder, um, you know, maybe a once in a generation kind of player. I think in a league like ours, uh, you know, Zach's capable of covering somebody and not need to be supported in every instance. And that's a real luxury at our level not to have to slide to people uh, in, in every instance. Uh, because you create those unsettled opportunities. These teams are so talented. Uh, that they, they can just pick you apart. And so I see in Zach, uh, in Zach Goodrich a, a very special player at the defensive end of the field. Give us an idea of, of how the pick was made. Was it something you said, you know what, this is what we're doing? Or was there a collaboration within the organization? Um, no, I talk, well, we talked a lot with my assistant coaches about it. Uh, I think everybody felt strongly about Pat Spencer. Yep. You know, and uh, after that, it was a little bit more of a mix. But for us, it was always going to be Zach Goodrich had that opportunity presented itself. We just felt like he was a, he was a special talent. All right, three picks in the book. Uh, let's uh, back up here to Ryan Ball. Your impression from uh, those first three selections? Yeah, no, no big surprises there. You know, maybe Conrad versus Smith or some other guys on, on the board. But, you know, two of the first three being two-way midfielders or short stick defensive midfielder. You know, I had Woodall ranked pretty high. You know, how far does he potentially slip? And maybe, you know, who is a, a team eager to kind of scoop him up? if he falls. Let's take a peek at the best available on your list. Yeah, so Woodall, as I described, he is somebody that I, I think is, you know, a top face-off guy in, in, the, in this draft, and so where does he kind of end up? You know, outside of that, Grayson Terrain, you know, Johnny Surdick, um, and, and then Brad Smith still on the board from, from Duke. All right, Ryan, thank you. Jim Stagnita, he's sitting right here. The head coach of the Whip Snakes has a couple things going for him today. First of all, 30 years of professional and college coaching experience and a son who currently plays at Johns Hopkins. What's it been like this spring traveling around watching games as a dad, but also as a draft analyst? It's a lot harder to be a dad than it is to be a lacrosse coach. And <laughs> any of us who have done that uh, can understand. It's been great as an analyst. I had an opportunity to see a lot of really great players play. Uh, certainly Hopkins plays a very competitive schedule and being part of the Big Ten, you know, week in and week out while having the opportunity to watch my son play, I do have the opportunity to go evaluate players. So it's been, it's been very helpful, less stressful on the evaluation side, <laughs> more stressful on the parent side. All right, fourth pick is yours. Who you got? The Whip Snakes Lacrosse Club chooses Alex Woodall from Towson. Okay, we just heard him discussed uh, from Ryan. No real surprise he's next off the board. What attracted you to him? Well, I was looking at next available, or excuse me, next you know, next best available. Um, certainly agree with the first three picks, um, and you know we, uh, I believe that you know that's an important aspect in the game. And what Alex brings to the table is not just a he's not just a pure faceoff guy. He's 
proven that he can he can create offense from the X um, with a short shot clock and you know the it's going to be important that the person at the X cannot just win a face off but has the athletic ability to actually create some offense. You expect him to come in and be your guy right away? Well, we have uh, you know we have Nardella who is Joey's a, a terrific and, and proven face off guy. Um, I believe that it's going to be really important to make sure that you have two good ones. All right, moving on to pick number five, Nat St. Laurent, the only PLL head coach who is also a current college head coach. He does so at Ohio Northern. Uh, I'm wondering where have you found the time to, to coach your team, you guys are still playing, to get to know your own roster and also uh, evaluate the draft prospects? Well, I think it's great um, being in the know with lacrosse in general with my current team at the college scene. We get to stay on top of it, but there's a ton of lacrosse being played and our DVR at home is full and yeah. uh, we get to watch back a lot of games and uh, the guys on our team, my college guys, are looking up to these D1 guys, and they keep us in the in the know as well. So it's it's not as hard as one would think. Who do you like best at number five? Uh, we like the um, Redwoods are going to select Clark Peterson out of Cornell. Okay, so playing next to Jeff Teat, I would imagine a pretty advantageous position for anybody who's offensive minded. Yes, very very much so. And what he brings to the table is is a unique skill set. He leads the nation in scoring, shooting percentage. Uh, you know, scored eight goals in the first half against Towson this year. And with some of the players that we can put out there with Matt Cavanaugh and Joe Walters, Kyle Harrison, some experienced players on this field, um, you know, he's going to, I think he's going to fit quite well with what we've got going for us. Have you had his name written down and just hoping you didn't have to cross it out? The I, I, I've been watching these go off the draft, you know, these names come off the board and just being able to have him sitting there for us was, was huge. All right, so from the Ivy League to the Redwoods of the PLL. Moving on to six, Chaos head coach Andy Towers, former Ivy League player of the year at Brown, also former head coach at Dartmouth, is the only coach who hasn't made a pick yet, but also he's the only coach with two selections in the top seven, as he'll have the first pick in the second round. How, how did you prepare for this scenario? Yeah, I just worked out different possibilities, looking at the rosters of everybody else in the league and tried to strategize accordingly. Have you had to cross some people out there that you thought might be on your board at this point? The good news, Paul, is no. <laughs> Nobody, nobody yet that you wanted or you thought would be there is, is gone. I'm feeling great about my first two picks, the guys I wanted for, for weeks. Awesome. Who is it at six? At six, the Chaos Lacrosse Club selects Johnny Serdic from Army. Interesting. Plays defense. Uh, anytime you go to an academy, uh, you always have to wonder about when or where will they be available. So what have you learned there? Well, we did some due diligence on his availability and his interest in playing, as well as his intangibles. It's really easy to see the chip that he competes with, the athleticism he has, how quick he is, given his size, his anger, uh, you know, the discipline of being in a service academy, uh, playing for a phenomenal head coach, Joe Abarici. This is a home run pick for us. Size and anger usually plays out pretty well in defense, huh? Absolutely. Was there a moment on film or when you saw him in person where, where you just knew this is your pick? I saw him play against Colgate earlier in the spring. And, uh, you know, certainly was aware of him before watching him play live. And after watching him play live, he was everything and more than what I had seen on TV at that point. And then following him closely over the last few weeks, clearly he's just cemented himself as uh, our top pick. I think they just played against Pat Spencer over the weekend. They did. As well. They did. And how did that go for him? I thought it went really well. You know, Pat Spencer is a phenomenal player and, yeah. and probably the best offensive player in the country in college lacrosse. And he certainly got his points and Loyal ultimately won the game. But I thought that when Johnny was covering him head to head, I thought he did very, very well. All right. We'll be back to him soon with the uh, first pick in the second round. But let's take a look at what has happened. Picks one through six started out. Pat Spencer ended up with Serdic from Army playing defense. And uh, quite a coincidence, they played against each other over the weekend. Your reaction, Ryan, to what you've seen so far? Yeah, I mean, I think you look at the chaos specifically and the, just the nature of the draft having back-to-back -back picks. You know, they had very specific needs coming into this draft. Serdic doesn't get picked selected uh, ahead of uh, the, that, that sixth pick. They're able to go kind of one-two, so they're able to get Serdic, and now with the very next pick, they should be able to shore up an immediate area of their roster. All right, we are just getting started here. Picks one through six in the books. You heard Andy Towers just say both their guys are there at six and seven. He'll let us know about that seventh pick right after the break. Welcome back to the 2019 PLL Draft. Here are the selections we saw in round one. No surprise at all. Pat Spencer goes one. 
Face off, Alex Woodall going to the Whip Snakes and defense at the end with the chaos, Johnny Surdick out of Army. Best available, you see at the top of the list, a couple of players from Duke, they're coming off a big overtime win against Marquette. The first name you see there, and these are the best available to Ryan Boyle. Brad Smith, he scored the overtime game winner over the weekend against Marquette. We expect to hear his name called very soon. All right, first pick of the second round belongs to the chaos. They went defense with the last pick of round one. Johnny Surdick, as you just saw from Army. So you said your guy was there for the first pick in the second round. Who is it? For pick number two, the Chaos Lacrosse Club selects Jack Rowlett from the University of North Carolina. From North Carolina, plays defense. What did you like about him when you got to know him? Again, just uh, the ability to play up top, down low. Seems to thrive on playing the other team's best offensive player. I love how hard he competes. I love the edginess with which he competes with. The fact that he has the endurance and the athleticism to get up and down the field. He's a threat to score goals in transition. Um, you know, what's not to like? Is this what people are calling a two-way midi? You know, listen, with, with uh, the way that the shot clock is going to be in play, in play here, there's definitely a value to long poles that can put the ball in the back of the net, and Jack certainly has proved he can do that. The guarding the other team's best player in the ACC is a, is a task every single time. No question about it. All right, uh, made the last couple of picks. Moving on back to the Redwoods, they chose Cornell attackman Clark Peterson in the first round. Second round, who do you like? I'm fired up. I think he's probably my favorite pick, and the fact that he fell to us has got me ecstatic with the way the game's going, and we're going to go. Uh, the Redwoods are going to select Tyler Dunn from the University of Pennsylvania. He's had a, a fantastic year there in the Ivy League. You said he's your favorite pick. He's my favorite, favorite player. He's my favorite player. Tell Next, us a little more about him. Well, he just can play both ways. He's a lefty. He takes wings off from faceoffs. He can play short, short stick deep mid. He can score in transition. He's got a really hard shot. He's got, he might be the fastest guy in, in the college draft right now. And, you know, when he played with the U19 team uh, in the gold medal game, he picked up a pole uh, to help his team out. So I just think he's, he's got me very excited. He's going to allow us to do a lot of things. What did it say to you when you were watching the game against Cornell? They have Jeff Teets, um, one of the best players in the country, and he had five goals in that game. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it just kind of it just kind of proves that there's so many good players out there, and if you put a player in a good situation, you know they're going to step up. And you know this guy is this kid's an animal, and we love our pick so far. But this one's got me super jacked up. Every draft has at least one coach or GM who says, "I never thought he would be there at this pick." I, yeah, you're the this, guy. This is it. I'm good. I'm, I'm very very excited, as you can tell. All right, I take a rest. We'll get back to you for round three. Whip Snakes are up next. They took the best face-off prospect available. That's Towson's Alex Woodall in round one. You've got your face-off guy. Who do you like in round two? Round two, the Whip Snakes lacrosse club selects Brad Smith from Duke. Okay. You surprised that he was still there? I'm surprised at how good a job my colleagues have done because uh, <laughs> I have my, my, my picks in my list is, is very similar in you know, quality and in needs, but uh, you know, Brad, uh, along the lines of what you know, what everyone else here has said, my colleagues, Brad Smith is a he's a Swiss Army knife. He can he's played attack, he's played midfield, he's really athletic, he has great size, he runs well. You know, he has the ability to be a, a two-way midi in, in in this league, and he is you know he's someone that has embraced different roles for Duke throughout the years. Uh, which is really important when you have a lot of great players on your team is, is to have guys who will embrace certain roles. And you know, I'm glad that we had an opportunity to. Uh, to did you see him. him score the game winner in overtime on Sunday against Marquette? I did not. I was at Penn State. Yes. So. Oh, that's right. You were watching Penn State. Plenty of good players there as well. Yes. I would imagine we'll hear some Penn State players called eventually. All right, that's three picks in round two. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, no, no huge surprises there. You, Rowlett and Dunn, I had them slotted in those, those exact spots. And then once you saw Smith start to fall, it, it was a natural fit for the Whip Snakes. You see him 6'3", 210, just a prototypical professional midfielder, a ton of versatility, can play the wings, can play midfield, uh, offensively, can go back and play D. He's played a little bit of attack at Duke, really do it all kind of player. Maybe fell because he's not having the greatest of senior seasons, so that might have kind of impacted his slide a little bit. But but no huge surprises with those three picks. The, the second round. All right, we're going to move from this table over to the next Chrome. They have the 10th pick. They selected Towson midfielder Zach Goodrich back in the first round. So in the second round here, Dom, who are you thinking about? Uh, we're going to stay at the defensive end um, and the Chrome Lacrosse Club in the second round selects Chris Sabia from Penn State. Penn State has made such a name for itself. Number one in the country based off the offense this year. Uh, how do you find a defensive player there? 
Uh, well, we've watched them uh, closely. Uh, I've talked to their coach. Their, um, their head coach played for one of my assistants in, uh, in back in the high school days, so they have a long relationship, and so they, they've been talking for some time. Uh, you know, you look at a tall, rangy defenseman, somebody that can play up on the wing and, uh, you know, pick the ball up off the ground, do some things like that, and uh, the more I've watched Chris, the more I've appreciated his game, I think, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Penn State is is uh, is the number one ranked team in the country right now, and they got a couple of really good players. Based off your first two picks that you made for your team, you must feel pretty good about your offense that you already have. Well, I think this is a league. I think Ryan mentioned it earlier. There's a lot of offense in this league, yeah. uh, you know, and so uh, so I think we needed to make sure that we were shored up at the other end of the field. I think, frankly, uh, Goodrich is a very special player, and probably would have picked picked him under any circumstance. Uh, but we needed to make sure that we shored up at that end of the field uh, going forward. All right, Dom coached at Virginia for over 20 years. Up next, Atlas. They went to Virginia for their first pick. That was the second pick in round one for Ryan Conrad. With your second selection, who's on your mind? Uh, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects Cade Van Rapport from Duke. All right, another player from Duke. Interesting background for him. His father played quarterback at Arizona State. What kind of player has he been at Duke? I mean, he's a do-it-all defenseman. He's a, he's a shutdown, on-ball guy. Uh, I think he's improved tremendously over his career there as an off-ball guy as well. Uh, great communicator. Um, really a do-it-all defenseman in a league, as Coach Starzer just said, that is, is going to need guys who can, who can do it all on defense. There's plenty of offense in this league. They just recently held Virginia and Notre Dame under their average, so the defense must have done very well. Do you remember watching him in those games? And I watched him a lot over the last few years, and and again, just seeing, you know, a really dominant physical defenseman. He's gonna who's gonna fit into uh, what we have already on our roster with the Atlas, and and have been watching constant improvement. All right, so I'm bringing us all the way back to where we started. Final pick of round two goes to the Archers. Remember, they took loyal attackman Pat Spencer with the first overall pick. Now, since Pat may not play, may choose to play hoops, this might be your first pick who's actually with you this summer. Who's it gonna be? Well, the uh, Archers Lacrosse Club are, are excited to select Curtis Corley from Maryland. Defense again, correct? Yes. What did you see from him playing in Maryland against all that Big Ten competition that you like best? Just very solid game in, game out. I, I was, I'm, I'm pleased that, that we have the opportunity to select him. I just think he's a high character young man who's solid off ball, solid on ball, plays in a great system, and uh, I think he's going to fit in well with, with us. Were you able to see him much in person? Not in person, but a, but a ton of tape. So uh -huh. A lot of tape, and, and really liked what we saw, and just the, the you know, the, the coaching staff really appreciates what he's about, not only on the field but off, and, and that's important to us as well. Was there a game that you saw on tape that really jumped out to you in terms of what he did that day? Uh, you know, it's it's interesting to watch games and really hyper focus on one guy. So not one particular game, but I've seen three or four, and, and each game just very steady. All right, uh, that does it for the second round. Let's take a look at what we just saw. Uh, beginning with the chaos and just ended with the archers. Ryan, I saw you over there paying very close attention. Your reaction to what we're looking at right now. Yeah, you saw the first round, you know, most guys went with the best available, really outside of any sort of positional need. The guy that they th thought could come in and make an e immediate impact. Now, this next round, heavy on two-way midfielders, heavy on close defensemen. So really shoring up that end. As I alluded to at the beginning, these rosters are loaded offensively. So huge focus in this draft is going to be on the defensive side of things. You got a lot of notes there. I know they're not all just for you, just for me, probably for some of the coaches as well. Uh, any of the six coaches, uh, one of them you'd, you'd like to ask a question about what they've done so far? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, looking at, you know, the, the chaos specifically and, and just kind of coming back to this, that one-two punch of Surlick, uh, Surdick and R Rowlett, you know, Coach Towers, how excited were you the fact that you were able to, you know, identify that specific area of, of your team and address it immediately this draft? Uh, really excited, Ryan. You know, the, the fact is I think we're looking at two guys that have proven that you might not have to necessarily slide to them at all throughout the game. And if you think about the quality of the offensive player in the PLL, that becomes quite a luxury. Dom spoke about it when he was referencing his pick uh, with Zach Goodrich. And I think if we can have poles on the field that we don't have to slide to, that can also be a threat to score in transition, I think it's going to play right into the, uh, the rules that are in place here for the league. All right, uh, thank you, Coach. And that is half of the very first PLL draft in the books. You see the picks that have already been made. All the rest of them coming up, beginning with round three after this. The 
the PLL begins its inaugural season with a doubleheader on June 1st at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. First, Chrome taking on the Archers, followed by Whip Snakes against Chaos. Both games will be seen on NBC Sports Gold. Then on June 2nd, it's Redwoods facing Atlas. You can see that one on NBCSN. Half of the draft already in the books. Almost half of the picks to defense. Exactly half devoted to offense. That leaves the best face-off prospect available, Alex Woodall. He came off the board in the first. Back to our draft analyst, Ryan Boyle. Brad Smith, we saw his name there to the Whip Snakes. What else should we know about this player? 6'3", 210. So in this league, I really think there's going to be a premium on athleticism and versatility. So Brad Smith in the midfield can bring a lot to the table. He can play defense. He can play offense. He can also play attack for you as well. So he's just a very dynamic player and he'll be able to match up physically against the rest of the PLL pros. Seems like it's not just a talented midi, but a versatile midi that's getting attention so far. Absolutely. And there's going to be more premium on that moving forward. So uh, case in point, the guys that have been drafted to date, a lot of guys can play two way style or short stick defensive midfielder. As you alluded to, half of the draft has been defense. Can look for that to continue on in the third round. One of Brad Smith's teammates at Duke, Cade Van Raphorst. I mentioned that his father played quarterback at Arizona State. A lot more to his story than just that, though. Yeah, really special player. You know, got a chance to actually watch him in high school in Arizona. He, he was an absolute man child, just a man among boys, physically dominant. And, and I think this speaks volumes to the sport where a, a kid can go from Arizona, become a Blue Devil. Played the most competitive, one of the most competitive programs in the country, and now is going on and playing professionally in the PLL. Just a tremendously inspiring story for the next generation of players. 6 1 2 15 going to the most physically imposing team. The Atlas seems like a pretty good fit. Absolutely. All right. Uh, best available players again, three and four coming up here in moments. What do you see? Yeah, for me, I look again, it's a premium on those two way guys and also on long poles that can maybe play down low as well as get up and down. So you look at Preparo, maybe he's undersized, but a guy that can be really good between the lines. And then at what point do teams address goalie and face off depth? In any draft, you get to the back part. Coaches talk about value. We'll see what value they find in rounds three and four. It begins with the Archers. That happens next. And welcome back inside Studio One here at NBC Sports. The very first PLL draft. We have two rounds already in the books. You see all the six coaches. They've made a pair of picks. They all have two left to go. Here's the work they have done. It all begins with the Archers. We'll get to their head coach, Chris Bates, momentarily for his third pick. According to Ryan Boyle, our draft analyst, here are the best players available. Again, all six of these coaches have two more picks to make. Let's get right back to the Archers. They started this draft with the best attack prospect in the nation, Pat Spencer. Then they went defense with Maryland's Curtis Corley. For your third selection, who do you like? The Archers lacrosse club select Colton Jackson from Denver. Denver played midi, played some attack. What stood out about his offensive game? He can shoot the ball. <laughs> that, that he can do. Uh, he can dodge. He plays in, in Coach Brown's offense, which is similar to, to some of the things that we like to do, so he knows how to play two man he knows how, knows how to find the back of the net and I think the intriguing thing for us is is he can play defense too right and, and that in this league will, will be at a premium a variety of offense I had it described to me he can go right he can go left he can do it on the run he can really just the same way you described him as a, a versatile playmaker on offense right. and, and he's a winner and I, and I think that goes a long way Played football in high school as well. Is that, that physicality something you see showing up? Absolutely. With the big boys at the next level, it's going to be important. It certainly should help to be comfortable with all that contact. Well, defense was a big theme in round two. Atlas went with Duke's Cade Van Raphorst. Uh, next selection, Coach Paul, who, who's your guy? Uh, the Atlas Lacrosse Club select Noah Richard from Marquette. So they just played against Duke over the weekend. Lost a, a, an overtime. Um, what did you see from him that really stood out to you? Well, uh, first of all, we have his brother Jake mm -hmm. on our roster. Um, incredibly high character guy. And Noah's cut from the same cloth, but much bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, he he's, uh, he's, can get up and down the field. He's scored, I think, eight points heading into this weekend at the LSM position. So again, a premium on guys that can get up and down the field in this league. He's great off the wings. Uh, it's a really dynamic, big, strong, two-way guy. Is he someone from your time coaching at Michigan that, that you remember when you were on the sidelines? We, uh, we always scrimmage them preseason. Uh, so, yeah, I remember both the Richard brothers, absolutely. All right, moving on here. Chrome took Penn State defender Chris Sabia with their second pick. Time for their third selection here, Dom. 
Go ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll head toward the other end of the field, and the Chrome Lacrosse Club uh, in this round selects uh, Max Tuttle from Sacred Heart. All right, from right down the road here, what stood out about Max's game? Um, just a big, strong kid that can do it all, uh, can face off for his team. Uh, his coaches are convinced he can play at either end uh, and be very effective. Uh, um, the, uh, talked to the head coach, John Basti, and you know he was speaking with the strength coach at Sacred Heart, and they think he might be the, the strongest and best athlete in the entire school. Uh, wow. you know, so we really like his potential overall. I like the fact that he's been mentored by Mike, by Mike Chaninchuk, who's one of the assistant coaches there. And, uh, so uh, we're really excited about Max's potential. Sounds like a real versatile player. Do you have a specific thought in mind as to where he might fit with you guys? Uh, no, I think you're just uh, yeah, looking for these young guys. You get them out there first and see right. what they can do where they're comfortable and then, and then try to get them in the right spot. All right, uh, let's take a look at the big board here. What's happened in round three before we kick it back over to Ryan Ball. A lot of picks already in. We're more than halfway through, Ryan. What do you see? Yeah, you look at the Atlas with the Richard selection and the Van Rapport selection before that. So taking care of close defense and the LSM position and also just culturally having two brothers on the same team. Def definitely a premium there and kind of more of the same in terms of two way midfielders. You know, at what point do the teams start to look at building goalie depth, face off depth and address those positions specifically? Ryan, thank you. Brad Smith went to the Whip Snakes as one of two Duke players selected in round two. Let's get their next pick. The Whip Snakes Lacrosse Club selects Isaac Paparo from UMass. Isaac Paparo. Now, I hear toughness with him a lot. I also people reference his size, uh, quite a bit under six feet. Tell me about your evaluation of this player. Well, um, we have Michael Earhart, who is well above six feet. <laughs> so you have plenty of tall be between the two already. of them, we, we, we probably have six feet. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but he is, he, he's, he's tough. Um, he can dominate the middle of the field, which is really important right, at this level. Um, he can get the ball up and off the ground, and he's tenacious. And uh, Greg Canella has given him a unbelievable recommendation, and uh, I trust Greg's experience, and I'm, you know, I, I believe that he is, he is going to be a great one-two punch for us in the middle of the field with Michael. Yeah, Michael Earhart, the one you referenced, the defender, uh, MVP of, of the World Games this summer. So a great guy to look up to and learn from. Next to him, uh, Redwoods, they well, took Black Belt and Penn Mitty Tyler Dunn in the second round. Time now for their third pick. Nat, go ahead. Yeah, the Redwoods are going to select uh, Brendan Gleason from Notre Dame. Um, very appealing to us with all of our Notre Dame guys on our team and um, speaking with the guys, there was a lot of push to have him and he allows us to, he can play midfield, he can play attack. Uh, I think he had five or six goals this weekend. And Career high five. Five goals and a huge game uh, against North Carolina that meant a lot to his team. And, um, and I know what he means to Notre Dame and talking with their coaching staff and our current players. So I, we felt he was a great pick for us. So already with eight players on your staff that played for the Fighting Irish, that was a thought going in? Absolutely. We know what we're getting with these young men. They're, they're coached by some outstanding coaches out there. and we're, we're really excited to have him join the club. You mentioned what he did Sunday with the career high five goals. How, how much did that help cement his status? For you? It, it moved him up quickly and we, it was a no-brainer after that game. All right, Andy Towers is next to him. That means the chaos. They have the final pick in round three. They chose Carolina defender Jack Rowlett in round two. Who are you picking this time? The Chaos Lacrosse Club selects Grayson Terrain from Navy. All right, anytime, as I said before, anytime you, you go to the academy, there's always the thought, when's he going to be available? So what do you know about that? Uh, we know that he was interested in playing and he's available to play. So we're excited to get an athlete like that. What really... Um, made him jump out to you when you watched him on team? The fact that he can do it all. I think he's shown that he is an elite athlete among elite athletes. Certainly lateral quickness, speed, explosiveness, his endurance, being able to play both ends of the field, pick up ground balls between the lines. I think he's offense in transition. I think he creates a situation uh, where he can defend for you as a short stick. You can play him up on the wings. And his speed is, uh, you know, is, is ridiculous. You, know, you factor that in with the fact that, you know, he goes to Navy. Mm -hmm. I think that we're bringing in somebody that's only going to help us create the culture that we hope to create. In everything you mentioned, you can add on all the experience as well. Four-year starter there at Navy. Three rounds in the books, moving along quickly now, Mr. Ryan Boyle. From what you've just heard, 
What pick or a couple of picks do you want to comment on? I think three really stand out, and you know, Coach Towers hit the nail on the head there. It's all about culture. You look at Grayson Terrain, the military between him and Surtick. You look at Gleason, the continuation of a Notre Dame heavy roster on, on the Redwoods. And then you look at Richard with the Atlas with his brother there. So three picks specifically, very culture related. And then, and then Jackson clearly fitting in schematically in terms of what they want to do with the Archers. All right, as promised, 24 picks will be made today. The 18 you see there already up on the big board. Six to go. Round four of the PLL Draft coming next. Three rounds officially in the books of the 2019 PLL Draft. There are the names and the selections. The four is blank for a reason. All six coaches have one more round to get through. As for the best players available, Ryan Boyle, who's on there? Yeah, for me, no goalies have been taken so far. So it does Troutner come off here. You know, there is an opportunity to address that kind of after the draft, but you know, an opportunity to lock up the number one goalie is that too good you know, of an offer to turn down. That brings us to the fourth and final round. And as you mentioned, no goalies taken yet. I wonder if one will happen here pretty quickly. Andy Towers of the Chaos, who's your last pick? The Chaos Lacrosse Club selects Austin Henningsen from Maryland. What should we know about this player and why you guys liked him so much? He's been great since day one. I think he's proved that he can uh, compete with anybody at the X. Uh, clearly, Maryland is probably the best lacrosse program in the last 10 years of college lacrosse. And in particular, his success since they've been there is very well documented. And I think he gives us a chance to win 55 plus at the X. Uh, and I think he's gonna be somebody that will go along great with Tom Kelly who I think is the best in the world. Did you have to get permission from Jim Stagnita, who has 20 Maryland players on his roster, to, <laughs> to, to make that pick? I didn't. I didn't. No, no clearance necessary. No. All right, you go Maryland with your last pick. Bringing us to the Redwoods. They've gone attack, midfield, and then back to attack. And uh, that leaves you with your final one. Yeah, with our final pick, the Redwoods are going to take uh, Tim Troutner, goalie out of High Point University. There's that goalie. Yeah. What would you see about him that just, made him the guy? He just, I love his presence in cage. His coaching staff spoke extremely highly of him. And, you know, to see what High Point's done this year and some of the big plays that he's made throughout the year just gets us a little bit excited. And, you know, I think he'll help us kind of build as we grow with this program and, and step in and compete right away. I know coaches uh, evaluating prospects who aren't from one of the major conferences want to see how they played against the very big schools. How was he against Duke and Virginia in those wins? I think he was pretty good. <laughs> I think he's, he was outstanding, and I think he's going to bring an edge to him that he still wants to prove something and prove that he's the best in the country, and we're really excited to get him with that pick. All right, there's your one and only goalie off the board. To the Redwoods, to the Whip Snakes, they've gone with a different position with each of their picks. Is that trend going to continue here, Jim? No, but the Whip Snakes <laughs> for their last pick are going to take John Danagelis from Yale. From Yale. Captain there, I believe, correct? Yes. If you're captain at Yale, defending national champs, that says something, first of all. Look, he's got a great pedigree. We're not all Terps. We have a few, uh, we have a few Yaleys on our, on our squad. And um, he's a good fit for us, again, for a lot of what we've been talking about throughout, you know, throughout this draft. He is, he's an athlete. Um, he's, he can play defense. He can get up and down the field. He plays wings on faceoffs. He's played on national championship teams at a very high level and uh, he's very well coached. So we're fits right into where we want to be as a, as a program. That head coach is Andy Shea. Yes. A player coming from Andy Shea can do what? At, at pretty much everything. They're tough, they compete, uh, they're hard-nosed, and they make people around them better. Right. Toughness always stands out with those guys recently. Bringing us to the other table and the Chrome, they've taken a pair of midfielders and a defender so far. Uh, Dom Starzer, what are you going to do here with your final pick? Uh, with our final pick, uh, the Chrome Lacrosse Club uh, selects uh, Connor Farrell from CW Post. What was your favorite thing about him? Um, uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, 6'2", 240, uh, starting middle linebacker for four years at Post. Uh, 34 of 37 versus the defending national champions. 84% overall facing off. There's a lot to like there. CW Post, officially now known as LIU Post. Uh, you and I were talking before the show. You also played football in yeah, the Ivy true. League at Brown. So did, did you warm up to him right away with his football background? Um, I, you know, I've always, in my career, I've always looked for those athletic kind of guys. Uh, you just like the fact that this young man, you know, looks like he can do a lot of things. Tough kid, uh, you know. Um, so, um, you know, I, I was fascinated with, with his background overall. All right, move to the Atlas next. Remember, in round one, they selected a pair of long poles with their last two picks. 
Who's up next here, John? Uh, the Atlas Lacrosse Club selects somebody I'm pretty familiar with, Brent Noseworthy from Michigan. I was wondering, I was wondering if that was going to come out of your mouth because you, you recruited him and coached him for a couple of years as well, right? I did. Yeah, really, really special young man. Uh, has not just on the field. He's, uh, he's a business school student, which is pretty tough to do at Michigan, and, and a leader off the field, a leader in the community, and, uh, and has some of the best hands you're going to see. And, and uh, we see him probably more as an attackman here, but uh, back at the position that he played uh, for me at Michigan at. So excited to have him. I saw you guys talking, drinking coffee before the draft. Did you walk up to anybody and say, lay off of my guy? <laughs> I, I recruited him. I coached him. He's going to be with us. I didn't, but I'm pretty happy he's still here at the end. All right, John, let's close things out here with the Archers. Uh, Chris took Pat Spencer at number one with the final pick of the PLL draft. Who do you like? Uh, the Archer Lacrosse Club is going to select John Prendergrass from Duke. From Duke. Uh, third player we've seen selected from Duke. When you were watching him on tape, can you think of one thing that really sold you? Just a tough athlete. You know, between the lines, he's on the wing, wings of faceoff. He, he defends. Uh, I watched the, the Marquette game this weekend and, you know, first, first play of the game, he puts the ball to the back of the net. So I think he's got some offensive upside, too, potentially in this league, which we like. I was talking to somebody I, I trust about with his knowledge of all the players. He said there are bigger names at Duke right now, but this is the one with the most upside of any of them. What is it about him? I hope so, first off. <laughs> uh, just a gritty competitor. He's, he's a tough kid and, and, you know, not afraid to put his body on you, and I, I just think at the end of the day, you need, you need athletes between the lines, especially with some of the rule changes. And as I said, I think he's got some off offensive upside too, uh, which will be fun to tap into. Well, it feels like we just started here already. All four rounds uh, in the books. Here's what's happened. The four selections made by all six of the head coaches. Ryan Ball, you've been talking with us throughout. You've been thinking about these picks. Uh, your first reaction to what we're looking at right now. I think two guys, specifically from Duke, that kind of slid just in terms of Duke midfielders really project well at the professional level. So I think Smith at 9 and Pendergrass at 24, just a ton of value there. And then zooming out a little bit and talking about some of the teams or the Chrome, they clearly wanted to go after some athletes with that last pick with, with Farrell. They got exactly that. You know, Redwoods, they had a very specific uh, draft class, draft board. They were able to get exactly what they wanted. And then I look at the Atlas, the last two picks being very culture heavy with Richard, a brother on the team, and Noseworthy, obviously clearly uh, comfortable with Coach Paul. So looking at uh, ways to shore up their team on the field and, and in the locker room as well. Putting you on the spot here just a little bit. We have 24 picks. It, obviously, you like a number of them. Think about the fit and what you know about these guys on the roster and what these players have done at the collegiate level. Is there one pick you look at and say, you know what, that is my favorite selection of can I day. Can I punt that to Pat Spencer of next year? Am there I, you go. Am I yeah. to do that? Because the Archers did that with number one. So I, I think that that is that generation of the talent, you know, the opportunity, if he plays, great. If not, the fact that he's there for the, the second year is still fantastic. And since you brought him up, you, you want to finish here with, with your thoughts on, on what exactly is happening with him and why he may or may not play? Yeah, I mean, looking at him, he's got a fifth-year opportunity to play collegiate basketball. Um, so the opportunity to explore that, potentially playing with his brother, you know, the, the family element. You know, sometimes that's just too good to be true and too good to turn down. Uh, that being said, the allure of playing for the, for the archers is also right there. So it's a, certainly a tough decision for him. The very first PLL draft is officially in the books. Here are the 24 youngsters who will have the chance to play in the PLL. It begins on June 1st. We'll preview that first weekend when we come back. Well, that was fun. All six of the coaches were here. They talked about all the picks they made. It started with Pat Spencer at one and ended with John Prendergast. He was the final one that went to the Archers. Here's some headlines and some highlights. By far the most popular position, middies, especially versatile midfielders. Only one goalie selected, Tim Troutner, got his season at high point off to a great start with wins against Duke and Virginia. And Duke, they led all schools with three selections provided. Back with my draft analyst, Ryan Boyle, one final time. Let's get to that first weekend, June 2nd. On Sunday, it'll be Atlas against Redwoods. What's your headline going to be for that game? You've got three of the most talented long stick midfielders in the world uh, Kemp, Tullett, and Sexton, they are going to cause a ton of havoc in the middle of the field. You know, do they disrupt Paul Rabel and company in terms of getting up and down? Atlas, Redwoods, they just made eight selections here. Which of those eight picks are you most excited to see? Well, you look at that specific matchup against the Redwoods and Ryan Conrad, the number two pick overall, in theory, you could slot him right in, in and he's the type of guy that could handle that type of pressure. 
Our congratulations to all 24 players selected today. We'd also like to thank all six coaches who joined us, and my thanks to Ryan Boyle for being our expert draft analyst. The PLL begins play June 1st, a doubleheader from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. First, Chrome taking on Archers, followed by Whip Snakes against Chaos. Both games can be seen on NBC Sports Gold. Then on June 2nd, the game we just discussed, Redwoods, Atlas, that one on NBCSN. For all of us here at NBC Sports, I'm Paul Burmeister. Thank you for watching the first PLL Draft.